all the books. Hey, hey, it's time for book reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to Forkmaster's vlog for the Warmer for the Files and Gaming System, created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to my 77th book review of this vlog. Today I'm going to be reviewing the short stories Little Horus, written by Dan Emmett, which is a part of the Age of Darkness anthology, and will be the last short story which I'm reviewing from that anthology. And I'm also going to be reviewing a short story called Luna Mendix, written by Graham McNeil, which was a limited edition story from the Black Library Anthology 2014 and was later republished in the Silent War Anthology. So considering that these two stories, which are not a part of the Medicine or the Shattered Legions Anthologies, they are still heavily connected to the whole overall Shattered Legions and Dwell storylines. So that's why I've included in this thematical week of um, Shattered Legions short stories. So this will be the fourth part of the stories which I am currently reviewing. Since I've already talked about the front cover for the Age of Darkness anthology, I think I'm going to talk about the digital front cover for that of Little Horus. Just like many of the simple digital shorts, it is a quite simple with the, just the mark of the Legion it will be about with, in two different colors. I like it a little better than Gun Sight, but it's still very simple. I will give this front cover 5 out of 10 forks. Let's see what it's all about. Little Horus Axeman is uneasy about the direction that the Sons of Horus have taken. As he leads the War Master's forces in their attempt to bring the mausoleums of Dwell under their sway, he faces his own doubts, the planet's natives and space marines of the Iron Hands. As the battle rages with his erstwhile brothers, Little Horus faces challenges that will change his life forever if it doesn't end altogether. So aside from the Nemes Nemesis uh, novel, this is the first proper continuation we have with Horus and his legion ever since the, the novel Fulgrim, written by Graham McNeil. Since the Horus Heresy setting, I'm not calling it a series anymore, it's a setting now more or less, has spread out to investigate other fractions of the during this time period, Sons of Horus or Luna Wolf or, and Horus himself has been placed on the bench and waiting for their time to get return again. So me and other fans have been waiting for like quite a while to see what happened to Horus after his um, fall from grace and uh, how he has um, become after the, the so-called betrayal at Isvan 3 and 5. So it's a perfect moment for Dan Amnett to return and, uh, and mantle, take up the mantle of continuing his storyline in this short story. The opening cell was from Isma 5 is still fresh in Little Horus' mind and the Sons of Horus also still, they also bear the scars from this battlefield massacre with the losses of the Morning World which they, um, they suffered at Istvan 3. But also this uh, late assassination attempt uh, which happened in the Nemesis novel. So they, they are under the consideration of who should be their replacements for the Marnival. And Horus then, during this story, goes to battle with the char character by, by the name of Sergeant Grail Noctua, uh, who shows that the process of uh, turning traitor is not fully complete within the Legion. And, uh, and a, a lot of talk is conducted between the characters uh, of, uh, as to who is a true son of Horus, which comes up in discussion with the Prime Mark. And during this conversation, Horus mentioned that uh, little Horus' obsession with Faestus could be uh, because he wants to forget that of Logan. The Legion then comes across another Iron Hand by the name of Shadrach Madison, the captain of the Temp Company, which I have reviewed a couple of stories in the past about, so I would recommend that you check these out and read the stories before you continue in this review. And this is the first proper returning he had uh, since the Feet of Iron novella written by Nick Kime. He missed out on the massacre and is hell-bent on uh, giving some payback to the, to the traitors. So he has gathered the survivors from the Iron Hands, Salamanders and a couple of White Scars who have managed to escape from the conduct system which uh, happened in the Scars uh, novel written by Chris Rafe. And in the middle of this battle, Little Horus believes that he has come across the Iron Tenth cap Captain, but instead he is only facing his second in command, uh, the character of Sergeant Beyond Hendrikos, which you both saw in the Feet of Iron novella, but also in the audio drama called Grey Talon, which I reviewed previously before this. 
Uh, and he comes together with the character of Hiba Khan, which is the white scar, which also returns from the great talent uh, of the drama. And uh, I say this is the chronological order, but release dates is, is a bit different because this short story was released back in 2011. And this other drama was released last year, if I'm not mistaken, during 2016. Anyway, so the duel between these two ends with the, that little Horus is heavily wounded and Herikos is dead. And just as they think about to start celebrating this whole thing, this victory, the White Scars ambushes them. And during another duel with the one, the, one of the White Scars, which I believe is Hibo Khan, tears off the faceplate of Little Horus, tearing off his face with it as well. Uh, but losing his face only makes him feel more like a true Sons of Horus than before, which is quite funnily enough. And later on as he lay in the Medicaid care deck, or whatever to call it, he dreams about Garvey Loken and he, and he feels that his fear of Garvey Loken is now gone, as you cannot fear one who is dead. So early on in the story it talks about how the Legion changed name from Luna Wolves into the Sons of Horus, how they changed their colors of the armor, and how the Morning World would come to be changed as well with the new members into it. And I believe this is symbol this symbolism of him having a new face is that the old little Horus is now gone and replaced with an old new one. As he, sh he was shown to be one of the traitors that might regret of everything that's happened, but now he has fully been corrupted with his new face, to say so. Dan Ambit managed to capture these old feelings from the earlier stories, but at the same time sh show some change and development in the, in the storyline, towards the worst for the characters. And he truly knows how to write Little Horus and develop his character. This is a small continuation from Nemesis, uh, the novel, and it works its way towards the next novel called Vengeful Spirit, written by uh, Graham McNeil. So I would say I highly recommend this short story. My only issue is that Abnet kept on using the term Adeptus Astartes and not Legionis instead. But this short story can also mark the end, potentially mark the end for that small rebellion and uni unity between the Iron Hands uh, that Medicine tried to establish in his previous, in the previous short story called Medicine, which I will go deeper into in the next review, which I'm doing tomorrow. All in all, I will give this short story nine out of ten forks. And with that we can move over to the next short story, which is called Luna Mendax, written by Graham McNeil. Just like Horus has been away from the main focus of the storyline, so has the main character of Gavriel Loken from the opening trilogy been very absent in recent stories, with the few, small exception of two other dramas which he took part in, which I felt was undeserving of the character for being having such a big role early on. This is hence why Gray McNeil has said that he wanted to return to the character and um, explore his inner psyche. We can begin to talk about the front cover for this uh, short story. The title, I believe, is uh, referring to Lying or Fallen Moon in Latin, uh, which could refer to that of the Broken Mournival represented the four moon stages of Horus' uh, uh, close advisory councils. I just wanted to say that out loud because it. Uh, it could be important to how you interpret the, the titles. But anyway, so, so there have been multiple covers for this short. The first shows uh, us a Loken in his Luna Wolf's colors. It's a bit cartoonish, but I really like it. It's well done, especially for only a short story. I would give this 6 out of 10 forks. And with that, we can take a close look at the next digital short cover for this short story. It shows the simple mark of the Inquisition with a grey background, marking his sim simply his journey into the Inquisition. I would give this slightly boring front cover 5 out of 10 forks. This short story is, as I said earlier, a part of the Silent War anthology, but I will review, I will take a closer look at that front cover in a later review, so I will return to that later on. So, let's see what the story is all about. On Luna, Garvey Loken has become a reclusive, and uh, his mind has not fully recovered from that of the horrors which he witnessed at Istvan Free, and after returning from his uh, failed mission to Caliban. He constantly ignores the summons from uh, Malkador, who wants to talk with him, 
and instead devotes himself to restoring a garden in the Somnus Citadel on, on Luna, the moon. While having deep thoughts with himself, he, hailed by, he is hailed by an unexpected visitor. This visitor turns out to be that of Tarik Torgadon, which was long ago slain on the Isfan Free by being de decapitated by Little Horus. Torgadon cheerfully remembers uh, being killed, yet he insists that he, he is here on Luna. Torgadon then asks his friend how come he is moping around in a garden rather than being out fighting the war, uh, considering that he is an Astartes. And Loken says that he is an Astartes, but he was not made to fight in the shadows, as Malkator would want him to do. And furthermore, he, now, he doesn't trust his own mind anymore because of the horrors that he witnessed. The fact that he's hallucinating a conversation with a since long dead friend. Trogadon says that Astartes are, are made to fight in any type of war and that Loken will, would not have forgotten these important things. He tells them to Loken to take a closer look at the garden and Loken is surprised to realize that he has recreated unconsciously the water park on 6319, which is the place where he was accepted into the Mornival back in Horus Rising. Loken says the Mornival is dead, but Torgadon says that the oath still remains, which he swore long ago, that he is to serve the Emperor above all the Primarchs and to resist his enemies and with all his strength. So before Torgadon then disappears, Loken asks if he is a figment of his imagination. And Torgadon says that he feels real and suspects that something terrible has happened because he knew that this, he has this feeling. That something, happened, something terrible happened to him after he died and only Loken can reverse this thing. When Loken then becomes alone again, he is once again visited by Ekton Cruz, bearing another summons from Malkador. To Cruz's surprise, Loken this time accepts the summons and he is ready to answer the call. So just like Little Horus in the previous short story is troubled with the faces he believes to be dead, so is Loken. This is a call to arms short story and shows how he's dealing with his psychological trauma which he got a couple of years earlier before the story. The end of this short story is a, what I would say a callback to the ritual which was conducted at Calf in which Erebus used the remains of Togadon and um, there are theories that uh, th that a demonic entity was created from this ritual which is still present in the 40k times as for, for instance a character called Tormageddon did appear in one of the god's ghost stories this is a nice touching story and it calls back to uh, it has a lot of callback to the earlier novels with the form of nostalgia that i rarely see in the stories these days it moves forward the story, at the same time it looks backward in the, with nostalgia. It's written, nicely written and I highly recommend it. I will give this 7 out of 10 forks and with that I want to end this review. Thank you very much for watching this review. Don't forget to rate and subscribe to my channel. Please give a thumbs up on my videos and also leave comments on things I'm doing good to so keep on doing them. And leave negative critique on things I'm doing bad so you can improve with the content entirely. And also don't forget to share this with your friends if it could be interesting, entertaining or simply inspiring. And I'm on Facebook these days, there's a link down in the description, check it out and see if you like it. I update more regularly there than I do here on YouTube, not by much, but enough to make a difference. And with that said, thank you very much for watching this book review. For the Emperor! Bye!